Welcome to our video. We will be talking about blood spatters caused by bludgeoning with projectile motion launch at an angle. Forensics and blood stain pattern analysis analyzes blood spatters to determine the angle of impact. We actually recreated a blood spatter so we could find the angle of impact or the area of convergence. There is actually a formula that forensics uses, which is the arc sign of width divided by the length. So here you can see that we chose a certain blood spatter to analyze and measure. The angle of the blood spatter that we found is 30 degrees. This is a picture of different blood spatters at different angles. As you can see, the lower the angle, the longer its elliptical shape is, and the closer the spatter gets to 90 degrees, it becomes more circular. So now it's time to find the area of convergence. To determine the area of convergence, the analyst has to determine the path the blood droplets have traveled by finding the angle of impact of several blood spatters. So here, we are trying to find several angles of impact. We try to find at least five angles by choosing five different blood spatters. The blue string is where our area of convergence is or where the bludgeoning occurred which is about 41 inches or approximately 1.04 meters from the poster board and with a height of 22 inches or approximately 0 0.36 meters. So let's apply some physics with a blood splatter. So with the blood splatter, we can create a projectile motion launch at an angle problem where we will find the initial velocity with the help of the area of convergence. So first we would have to draw out the scenario. So as you can see, I've drawn out the scenario with some of the measurements. So here's the wall, and here is the area of convergence. So the length between the area of convergence and the wall is approximately 1.04 meters, and the angle is the blood spatter that we found earlier in the video. And this is the blood spatter's location, which is approximately 0 0.36 meters below the area of convergence. So now, since we've already filled out the, our scenario, we can now create the X and Y tables. So our, so our origin is the area of convergence. So our initial position for 0 Initial position for X and Y is 0. The final position for X is 1.04. And, and the final position for the Y axis is 0 0.36 negative because it is going down. And in order for us to find the velocities, we would actually need to find the X and Y components. So this, so if you can recall, this is the 30 degrees. So right here, we don't really know the initial speed, so I would call it V. This is our y-axis, so we will call it V sine of 30. And this is our x-axis, so this will be V cosine of 30. Now we can plug this back into our table. So our initial and final velocity will be V cosine of 30. Our acceleration will be 0 because the initial and the final velocity did not change. We don't know the time. And our initial velocity for the y-axis is V sine of 30. But we don't know the final velocity. And the acceleration would be negative 9.8 because of gravity. So we are trying to find the velocity, but in order for us to find the velocity, we would need to find V. But for us to find V, we would actually need to use the kinematics equation X and Y. So we will try to find the, so we will try to find the Y axis velocity so we will use the kinematics equation 2, which is right over here. So we will try to solve it right now. So here is the equation. So looking at the table, we can fill out 
the variables and it will look like this. So after filling them out, we can start simplifying. You can cross that out, we can simplify this, and it would look like this. So right now we cannot simplify anymore, so this would be our equation for the y-axis. Now we can do the, the velocity for the x-axis, which we will be using the kinematics equation to in the x-axis. So here I wrote the, down the equation so we can start solving. Just like the y kinematics, we can look at the table and start filling out the variables so it would look like this. We can cancel out the zero, cancel this out because it will be zero also. And once we simplify, it will look like this. So here, you can actually um, solve for V. So we can solve for V in the y-axis kinematics. So once we solve for V, it would look like this. And after you solve for V, we can actually start plug it in, plug it in the, the y-axis kinematics. So now, once you start uh, substituting V into the y-axis kinematics, it would look like this. Um, you, can, you can eliminate T, cancel out T, and the cosine 30 and sine of 30, you can actually simplify that, um, which will become tan 30. So here you can start simplifying again. And it would look like this, which is 0 0.6. So now we have to um, uh, let t by itself. So we will minus 0 0.6, which will become negative 0.96. And we will divide negative 4.9. And it will become this. And now we have where I square root both sides so I can cancel out the square. So once I square root 0 0.20, its time will be 0 0.45 seconds. So now that I have found time, I can substitute it to the velocity problem. And it will become this, where the velocity is 2.0 meters per second which is not very strong well I guess now that since we found the velocity this is that's it for the video and I hope you guys learned a lot about how forensics analyze blood splatters and how we can apply physics in real life situations thank you You can just edit it. See.